uh, yes, I'm going to be presenting uh, at uh, uh, CONI 2022 about uh, the role or is the usage of anti-oral um, CGRP drugs uh, for the management of the migraine. And, and I, I would try to debate uh, or say argue for whether they may replace um, uh, the uh, injectable ones which are available on market. Now, at this moment in the United States, we have two oral small molecule CGRP antagonists approved for prevention of migraine. And um, one of them is, um, is a torturpant, which is, uh, it has a brand name of um, Culipta. Uh, and it is basically an, an FDA approved medication for prevention of migraine. And it comes in um, three dosages, uh, 10, 30 and uh, 60 milligrams uh, once daily, um, which, which uh, our patients can take with or without food. Um, on the label, FDA label of this uh, medication, the side effects uh, include nausea, constipation, and fatigue. Um, and then there is a second FDA approved uh, medication called Remijapan, which is, um, it has a brand name of Nutec, and it is approved for prevention of um, migraine as well. And it comes as, as a dosage of 75 milligrams every other day. And side effects include nausea, abdominal pain, and dyspepsia, meaning, you know, a discomfort, abdominal discomfort. So um, now, these are the oral, uh, you know, preventative medications which are uh, now available and, you know, in the, in, the, in the landscape of current treatment of migraine, you know, we do have uh, injectables ones, which you know, I'm arguing against. And I think there are several advantages for the use of this molecule, uh, for this uh, drugs or a small molecule antagonist. Um, and um, I'm going to mention about these advantages in a minute. Um, now, if you look at the data, I mean, the data are pretty solid and show that there is um, definitely um, response to both treatments. I mean, there is uh, a difference from placebo in the clinical trials. So there is a clinical data so supportive the use of, of these medications. Now, if you look at the time course in one of the studies, for example, for the atrojapan, then you can see the effect already, or, or so-called separation from placebo, is already seen in the first four weeks, and then it continues, um, you know, through the weeks nine and twelve. So, uh, so the results are pretty robust and sustained, we can say. Now, uh, we also see the fifty percent reduction in the um, um, the monthly uh, migraine days. Um, and in contrast to placebo, uh, and results are quite similar to uh, to the ones we have for CGRP um, monoclonal antibodies, which are the injectable ones. Now, uh, the side effect profile, as I already mentioned, is uh, relatively they, they look like to be relatively tolerable. Uh, now, the, we do have uh, some data uh, from the 52-week open-label um, extension trial where we have some, some data about the safety, uh, but also we see the sustained improvement and actually further improvement, you know, um, the longer the patient takes the medications. Um, now, uh, the, um, the question would be, why, why, you know, why could oral anti-CGRP drugs uh, uh, they could displace, you know, the injectable ones for prevention of migraine. Now, if you look at the uh, first, if, I want to give you some a little bit of overview of the, the the epidemiology of migraine. So, you know, migraine is very common in individuals aged twenty to fifty, right? I mean, that's the, pretty much the range age range where the migraine occurs most commonly. Now, it is also more common in women than in men. We know that, and um, it's um, it's also affects uh, the the individuals who have a lot of comorbidities, for example. So migraine patients may have um, a lot of uh, comorbidities, so-called conditions which co-occur with migraines, and this could be depression, anxiety, and et cetera. Now, uh, so if you look at, there is a recent study uh, uh, from the United States, it's an all population-based study, um, looking at lifetime consultation for migraine um, uh, or headache by specialty, and um, and you see that majority of patients with migraine are seen by primary care physicians in the United States. And I think this is the case also for other countries uh, because there's simply not enough neurologists or headache specialists to see uh, all patients with migraine or headaches. Uh, 
And uh, so that's one of the facts, which is, you know, primary care physicians, you know, they are seeing the patients with, um, with, uh, with migraine more often than, uh, let's say, neurologists or um, headache specialists or other specialties. Now, why this is important is because we know that, for example, from a study from trip dance, that um, uh, the oral trip dance are widely used and widely prescribed, for example, by primary care physicians, right? And there are, um, it's possible reasons are convenience, the oral trip dance. It's easier for the patients, also easier for the, uh, uh, for the primary care physician to prescribe and instruct the patient how to use it. And we also see uh, there are some meta-analyses have shown that uh, the, um, the, there is a very low utilization of subcutaneous, for example, somatriptan um, in the uh, population of, of, uh, of, of migrant nurse. And we actually, um, the, one of the reasons they say it could be that there's a needle phobia. And it's actually, you know, I started looking for the needle phobia, how common it is actually in the population, right? And it looks like um, it's actually quite high, I mean, uh, for adults aged 20 to 40 years. And the prevalence of needle fear is uh, roughly 20 to 30%. And, um, and it's more common, you know, in young children, women, it's high prevalence of the um, needle fear or, or phobia. So, and, uh, you know, thinking of our patients, majority of our patients are women, you know, because uh, migrant affects women more often than men. And uh, and majority of our patients are at the younger age. So this becomes quite relevant, right? And, and, uh, uh, and in one survey, there was a one survey that showed that um, it, the physicians estimated that 50% of the migrant patients refused injectable medications and, and 50% were actually needle phobic. So that's, a, that's an issue which we don't really talk about. Uh, and I think um, since we do have now alternative options, like oral options, I think it will be easier for us to offer uh, these novel treatments to patients uh, which are not injectable ones. And, 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 uh, and we will avoid this uh, issue of needle uh, phobia, for instance. Now, uh, the other thing is that um, I want to show is it's also, it's, you know, generally I would say um, primary care physicians are uh, more concerned about the side effects and duration of the symptoms, right? I mean, that's, the safety is one of the major reasons why they are concerned concern for prescribing uh, the medications for patients. And, and, and if you look at the uh, seizure premonoclonal antibodies because of their half-life, and um, so the so medication stays longer in your body, so there is a potentially, um, um, the, the side effects may last longer. I mean, that concerns primary care physicians. It's much easier to prescribe something that has a short acting, uh, and uh, have a shorter, ha a shorter half-life, I would say, and, um, and, and that's the case for a torch of pan, a and a pan, and their half lives runs around 11 hours. So, um, so that's also another reason why primary care physicians may be um, uh, willing to prescribe these medications than uh, the injectable ones. And, and in overall, they used to prescribe oral medications, just like naturally, like on, uh, like all other physicians. Now, the other interesting part of Remy Japan is that actually it offers both an acute and preventative treatment option, which is quite unique. I mean, we have not seen this before. So Remy Japan can be both acute and preventative. So there is also um, no uh, potential risk for medication overuse or rebound, so-called rebound headaches uh, with the use of uh, G-PANs. And, uh, and that's been uh, shown in the safety data from a torture pad. Now, another, th another uh, advantage of these drugs are they're mechanisms-based, just like the monoclonal antibodies. So they're mechanisms-based drugs. And, uh, and you know, uh, overall, because we're not injecting the patients, so the placebo rates are usually, uh, are, they may be high, but we know that placebo rates, response rates are usually higher for injectable uh, drugs um, than the oral medications. So in other words, that, you know, um, close to their next dose, uh, the patients sometimes up to one week, uh, you know, before their uh, uh, next dose, they may experience wear off effect of the drug uh, with antibodies. Uh, so this is, would not be the case if the patients take something orally daily. And um, uh, because, uh, 
they, 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 this issue will maybe avoid it uh, by taking um, the small molecule uh, CGRP uh, antagonists. And um, so that's another advantage, I would say. And I'll present some, uh, during my presentation, I'm, I'm giving some data about uh, the, the number of days for the wear off effect and also a percentage for each uh, uh, monoclonal antibody. Now, uh, the other thing issue is that, you know, speaking of when, when we mentioned about that most of our patients are um, females, uh, there are some pregnancy considerations with anti-CGRP drugs. Now, the FDA uh, recommends against uh, pregnancy or breastfeeding or planning to become pregnant uh, for patients who are on CGRP antagonists. And the suggested numbers uh, of months are uh, roughly six months. It's based on the calculations based on half-life. So in other words, that if a person, if, 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 if our female patient is on anti-CGRP monoclonal antibody, we would recommend to not take uh, the medication for six months uh, prior to starting to conceive, uh, which is uh, extremely uh, challenging. I mean, given that the migraines can be um, disabling and you know, you want to treat the migraines. So this issue becomes not a, uh, solved by, you know, taking the daily medication and with a half-life of 11 hours, then um, uh, we can recommend our female patients to stop the small molecule uh, oral CGRP antagonists one to two weeks prior to family planning. So that's another advantage, I would say, um, of using these medications. Uh, and um, so... What are the other issues that could occur with the use of um, uh, CGRP monoclonal antibodies and, and not with the oral uh, uh, anti-CGRP uh, antagonists? Uh, for example, we don't have an issue of injections or reactions or bruising or risk of skin infection, which we can have with, the, with, the, with injectables. Um, there were, some of the patients may report device malfunctions, right, uh, or needle breakage, I mean happens rarely, but it could happen theoretically. Uh, disposal of the device. Now we have to refrigerate uh, the CGRP monoclonal antibodies. So you don't have those issues with the, with the oral um, uh, you know, tablets or oral CGRP uh, uh, or anti-CGRP uh, uh, drugs. Uh, now, some people would argue that uh, the adherence uh, or so-called compliance with treatment will be higher with a shot with injections because they are done once a month. But however, we know that a once daily um, uh, dosing of oral medications generally leads to better adherence rates than the more frequent dosing regimens. And this is the case for, uh, for our drugs. I mean, they are once daily uh, formulations. Um, uh, so... No issues of neutralizing antibodies, which we see with um, CGRP monoclonal antibodies. Now, the importance of this antibodies is not known, well known, but you know, but uh, but uh, we don't know for sure how they're gonna, I mean, how they affect the treatment. We still need some more studies, but we don't have we don't have to think about it uh, uh, when we prescribed uh, oral um, uh, uh, CGRP antagonists. And uh, and the needle phobia and needle fear I already mentioned to you uh, as as one of the big issues. So in conclusion, I can say the oral CGRP antagonists are um, first of all proven to be effective for the treatment of migraine. I mean this is based on the clinical data, um, and um, the, the tolerability is uh, is is good. I mean. Um, and in the favor of using these medications for prevention of migraine. Now, um, the safety concern with oral CGRP antagonists is there, but is less due to shorter half-life. And and I mentioned one of the important factors is the ease of prescribing these medications because they're oral and administration of these medications. Um, and, uh, you know, this is the unique part of remedial plan is that options the so-called, you know, preventative and acute uh, um, treatment option. Uh, 